I want to show you some libraries that will enable you to be able to streamline your code and be more efficient while you're writing SAS. There are several of these libraries available out on the web. The ones that I'm going to share with you are going to be Bourbon, Neat, Bitters, and Refills. I like these sets of libraries because they allow you to customize what portions you want to use. So you're not adding too much to your project. You're not adding things that you ultimately don't need. These are all small libraries. They're composed of mixins and functions that you can just use and plug right into your projects. Bourbon is the one that we'll be looking at first, and it's just a lightweight SAS tool set that has mixins that will allow you to only include the things that you really want to use. Neat is a grid system, and it moves the grid out of your markup and into your style sheets. Bitters gives you a nice looking site right from the start and helps you get started faster. And Refills has components that are just pre-built that you can incorporate into your projects. We'll start off by looking at Bourbon. Bourbon can be located at www.bourbon.io. You're going to install Bourbon by actually installing the Bourbon gem. And then once this is installed, you'll have the ability to use Bourbon in conjunction with your SAS. The Bourbon website looks like this. It's super minimal and they'll have information on installation, documentation, and change logs are tracked here as well. You can also click Get Started. This takes you to the installation page. If you click this, you're going to be redirected to a GitHub page, which is going to tell you how to install the Bourbon gem. Let me show you how you do this. I'm going to be using Terminal to install Bourbon into my project. Now, in order to install Bourbon, you're going to need to have previously installed SAS. I already have SAS up and running, and I'm actually already CD'd into the directory that I'm going to be working from. It is worth mentioning that the directory that I'm working on is following the format that I shared with you earlier in this course. I have a CSS folder, which is where my compiled CSS is going to exist. I have an HTML file that's going to contain the HTML. It, of course, is going to link to the external CSS file, which currently doesn't exist. And then I have my SAS directory. And my SAS directory has the different folders that would contain any various types of partials that I might want to compile into my main.sass file. The main.sass file is simply going to point into these various directories and compile the partials into the project. My project is currently empty. I don't have anything in my project yet, so we'll be building this project together. I'll start off by installing Bourbon. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use sudo gem install bourbon. It's going to ask for my password, so you'll have to write your password, and then it's going to go ahead and install the bourbon gem. You can see that it's successfully installed bourbon. The next step would be to cd into your directory. I've actually already done that, so I'm already pointing into my 0801 folder, which is this directory that we're looking at right here. Then I'm going to install Bourbon into this project. So I'm just going to use Bourbon install. And when it does this, it's going to install the Bourbon files into your project. You can see that now I have a new folder called Bourbon. And the Bourbon is going to contain a folder with all of the Bourbon information. And the information that I've installed is using Sassy CSS. And that's fine. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. We can still continue to use Sass. Now what I like to do is I like to move the Bourbon folder into my SAS module directory. So I'm going to go into my SAS folder and I'll place this inside of modules. Since Bourbon is a library, which I find to be a module, I'm going to add it into the module. Now I'm going to open up my modules directory. So I'll go into brackets to do that. Here's my modules directory. I'm going to write the code to import the Bourbon folder and files into my project. So I'll use my add import and then I can simply just write bourbon because I want to go into the bourbon folder forward slash bourbon which is the name of the file that I want to be able to find. We'll save the project and I'm going to go into my SAS file and inside of our main.sass file I'm going to go ahead and import in all of the directory partials that I've already created. So this is going to pull in everything and obviously when I pull in the modules directory because we've already added a pull for bourbon it's also going to pull bourbon into our project. The project that I'm starting to work on is just a basic HTML page. It doesn't have any content on it. I'm going to just go ahead and make a div with a class of box and let's make four of these on the page. And now I have four 
divs with box classes. And then just to add a little bit more, I'm going to add a H1 and a paragraph. My page currently looks like this. I'm gonna take you back to the Bourbon website. And if you go to the documentation setting, you can see all of the things that are part of Bourbon. These links along the left are going to tell you the different sorts of mixins that are part of Bourbon. And then it gives an example of each of this particular mixin. It tells you how to use it. And then it's going to tell you how the CSS would be output if you actually use it. So in this example, we're using border color and you can see that the border color is being set to different colors. The bottom border color is set to null and it doesn't compile in our CSS. And this is true for any of these particular mixins. So let me show you what this looks like. If I go into the font stack for Helvetica, you can see that it just says font family and then it says font stack Helvetica. So this is what I need to add. And if I do that, it's gonna output Helvetica New, Helvetica Arial, and then Sans Serif. So it's automatically gonna make this font stack. So if we go back into our project, and I'm just going to load my base directory. So here's my base directory, it's importing base. My base partial already has some information right here. And previously, I was bringing in a font family font stack that I had created in my variables. So you can see I have a variable for font stack that's going to create open sans sans serif. And my page currently is using Times New Roman. And the reason why is because I haven't actually programmed SAS to start watching my file. So let's do that first. Here I've installed my bourbon. I'm ready to start working. I'm going to write SAS dash dash watch. And I'm going to tell it that I want to watch in my SAS directory, because I'm currently just pointing in my 0801, which is kind of my root directory. So I'm going to point to the SAS directory, which remember here is my folder structure. So I have my 801 folder right here. Then I have my SAS directory, and then I have these. So I wanna start watching main.sass. So I'm gonna tell it to watch the SAS folder, and then I'm gonna do forward slash, and tell it to watch main.sass, and then I'm going to use a colon and tell it where I want to compile to. And we want to compile into our CSS folder, and we want it to compile to a file called main.css. Now currently I do not have a file called main.css, so if I hit return here, it's going to say that it's watching for changes, and it automatically created the main.css file. So as soon as I compile the CSS file, if I refresh my page, we should see some slight changes to the page. And you can see that my font family has been changed, the H1 is coming in, and that's because it's bringing in some of these styles that I had previously defined in my base.sass file. So my H1 had been defined with some settings, H2s, paragraphs, images, A tags, things like that. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to delete all of these rules right here. And on the body, I'm just going to paste in that I want the font family to use dollar sign font stack dash Helvetica. If we save right now and we refresh, you can see that there is a problem. Now the problem is occurring because I am loading my modules dot dir directory after the base dot dir. So technically my bourbon mixins are not available because they're being loaded afterwards. So what I need to do to resolve this problem is I need to go back into my main.sass file and what we're going to do is we're going to move the modules file up to the top of our stack. So I'll just cut that and I'll place that first. Now if we save and we refresh you can see that the error message goes away and my font has changed. So now it is applying the Helvetica font stack. So anything that I have selected on my page is going to be using my Helvetica new. Now Helvetica new is being crossed off because I have a rule in my reset.sass file, which is setting my font to inherit, but it is inheriting from the body. So if we actually go into the computed styles that are being applied, you can see that the font family is set to Helvetica New, Helvetica Arial, and then finally Sans Serif. So that font stack is being applied to the elements on my page. Let's look at a couple of other things that we can do with Bourbon. If we go into the documentation here, Let's find some other things that we can apply to the elements that are on my page. So I'm going to show you the size 
bourbon mix-in. So this is a mix-in and it sets the width and the height of an element in one statement. So you can see this is what you would do. You would use your add include size and then you're gonna pass on an argument. If you only pass on one argument, the width and the height will be the same. If you pass on two arguments separated by a comma, the width and the height are gonna be different. So let's go ahead and include this into our project. In addition to the paragraphs, remember that we had made divs with classes of box. So I'm gonna go into my base.css and just to keep things easy, I'm gonna just leave all of these rules in base.css. Normally, what I apply to the box is probably not going to need to go into the base.css. I would probably put this into one of the plugins or something like that, but we're just gonna do it here to keep things a little bit more concise. So I'm gonna write my selector, which is .box, and here, all I have to write to use this is plus sign, and I'm gonna write size, I'm using a plus sign because this is a mix-in, and then I'm gonna pass on values. So if I put 100 pixels, and we're also going to need to set a background color, and if we look here in our documentation for bourbon, there is a tint mix-in that's already been created. So this just mixes a color with white, and you can see that your background color, you're gonna pass on tint, you set the amount of the tint and then a percent value. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll go ahead and we'll come here and I'm going to use my background color and then we'll set the tint. And for the tint, we'll just start off by setting this to red. If I save and we look at our page, you can see that I'm getting an error message and that's because this particular mixin is wanting to have a value for tint. So we have to add that. So we'll put red. We'll start off by putting 100%. Now, how this mix-in works is if we refresh the page, you can see that here's my boxes. We don't see any sort of color, and if we look in the inspector, the background color is white. Well, if you check, this mix-in is actually mixing a color with white. So when we mix 100%, the color actually becomes white. If I change this number here to 0%, now we're gonna get a fully saturated red. So you can see the boxes are this very bright red color. And if we come back and do something in between, so I'll change this to 40%, and let's give the boxes some margin settings. So I'm just gonna say margin, and we'll just do 0.5 Ms all the way around. You can now see that the boxes are more muted. If we come back to Bourbon and look at some of the other sorts of settings that we have available here, you can see that another one of our settings is position. And I just realized there's margin here too. So we could actually use the at include mixin to set the margin. This is easier if you're using different values for your margin. For us, we're just gonna use the same margin, so I don't really need to use their mixin here, but you could find that to be helpful. Let's go down to the position, however. And position is going to give you a one-line method for setting an element's positioning properties. Position top, right, bottom, left. And you use null value to skip the edge of a box. So we're gonna go ahead and say at include position, and then we would pass on these different values. So if I wanted it to affect the boxes that I have, we're going to use our plus position. And then in parentheses, I'm going to pass on some values. So let's say that we want the position to be absolute. I'm going to use 100 pixels for the top, auto for the right, auto for the bottom, and 200 pixels for the left. And if we save and we refresh, you can see now it looks like I just have one box. The other boxes are there, they just happen to be behind this particular box. So they are located underneath these other boxes. That's probably not what we want, so I'm gonna come back in here, and let's actually remove that. Let's add a position of relative, and let's use the triangle mix-in. So this is gonna generate a triangle pointing in a specified direction. So you're gonna go ahead and have the element, you're gonna use the and before, and then you're gonna include triangle, and you would specify the direction that you want the triangle to point. So we have up, up right, right, down right, down, down left, left, or up left. And I think up is actually here, you just can't see it, but up is one that you can use. Then you would set the width of the triangle, 
the height of the triangle and the color of the triangle. So I'm just going to copy this and we'll come back into our file. Let's, instead of using position absolute, we'll use position relative and relative is simply going to make these just stack on top of each other. I don't even think we need the position for this example, so maybe we'll just wipe this one out. Let's make a new selector for dot box colon before, and we'll use the triangle mixin that we were just talking about. And I'll just use the settings that they have. So if we paste this in, and remember we're using sass, not sassy sass, so I need to get rid of the semicolons. And I'll also need to add a content rule, and I'm just gonna pass on nothing for content. So we'll save this. And if we refresh, you can now see that I very quickly have a triangle that's pointing up. And obviously I can control any of these attributes. So if I wanted a small triangle, I could make this 10 pixels by 15 pixels, and I could set the color to be whatever it is that we want. We actually have a variable that we defined earlier called ocean blue. So if I wanna use that ocean blue, I will specify that. And if we refresh, you can see that now my triangles are very pointy and they're pointing up. So if you wanted to find any of these features, you would just come in here and you would locate the features and then you would apply it to whatever it is that you need. I wanna show you one more before I wrap up this section of the class. I'm going to go into my index page and here are my boxes. I'm going to wrap the boxes inside of another div called boxes. So now all of the box divs are children of these boxes. And back in our base.css, we're going to add to the dot box rule that we've already defined that we want our float to be left. So this is going to allow the boxes to appear side by side. If we save our page and refresh, now you can see how my boxes are side by side. So this is a common problem where you would have elements that would be floated and then the following elements are going to come up and float on the right side of those floated left elements. So I want my H1 and my paragraph to appear underneath the boxes. In order to do that, I would need to apply a clear to something. So what we're gonna do is in our Bourbon library, we do have a clear fix. So this just allows you an easy way to clear containing elements. All you have to do is include the at include clear fix on the element and it's gonna automatically produce our clear content and display block and also apply this to the pseudo class of after. So let's just see what that looks like. I'm gonna come in here and we'll use a selector for dot boxes and I'm just gonna use my plus clear fix. I could also write the at include, but I can write plus clear fix as well. That's a shorthand way of using your at include. And if we save and we come back in here and refresh, you can now see that this content is going to appear after the boxes. And here's the pseudo class that's being applied inside the boxes div. It's applying after the last box. So really handy and the documentation is, is pretty easy to use. You're just gonna find what it is that you want. You would click on it, you would read up about it. It's gonna show you examples of how to use it and also show you the output for the CSS. So I think that you'll find using Bourbon in your projects is going to allow you to have access to some of these pre-made mix-ins that are gonna be helpful for you to use.